My name is Martin Scanlon. I am the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Professional Capital and Community, and we're pleased to welcome three of our board members here for a special video recording to launch our Professionalism in the Pandemic special issue. Thanks, Pakti, Alma, and Pasi for being here. I want to start us off by uh, a question about professionalism. So at this particular time in history, as citizens all around the world are coping with the many disruptions uh, that the COVID-19 pandemic is causing communities, how is this concept of professionalism, particularly in education, changing? Or put differently, should we as educators change how we think about professionalism in light of the pandemic? To me, professionalism should not change in its meaning and nature. Professionalism means you have the knowledge, skills, and attitude of the profession, and you're committed to the mission of the profession. So now, even during a pandemic, the mission of education has not changed. It is always to enlighten, to inspire, to edify, to care. Now, that has not changed but the way to do it will have to change. So what does exercising professionalism during a pandemic look like? So first, teachers will have to learn very quickly to teach in an online environment that is professional. First. Secondly, teachers will have to find better ways to educate and not just simply replicate lessons in a virtual medium. And we have to look out for disadvantaged students alert school to their situation, see whether help for them could be found. And very importantly, we should continue as good teaching professionals to have that joy in teaching, even if it is now online. Because how can we expect learners, our students, to have joy in learning if we do not have joy in teaching or be in a very difficult situation? There is also another concept called collective professionalism. It's not just about the individual, but collective as a profession. So collective professionalism means something like that, that as a collection, as a collective, we share resources and help one another face challenges in teaching in an online environment. And different educators play different roles in the system. Classroom teachers, department heads, school leaders, headquarters officers. Professionalism, collective professionalism, also means that we trust one another, that we are all working together to solve problems, or be at different levels and different parts of the system. And when we as teachers all show that sort of commitment and care, then our collective professionalism gives the society confidence in teachers and schools. So that's my view. Thanks, Pakti. Let's push the conversation beyond this to leadership itself and thinking about vis-a-vis -vis leadership. In your perspective, is the pandemic challenging or disrupting or transforming educational leadership in schools or in school systems? Well, if I, I can respond to that. I mean, the, the, the short answer is yes. Um, I, I think that leadership has experienced a uh, a pandemic paradigm shift, and it probably won't return to where it was in terms of the practices, the norms, the expectations of leaders. Now, that doesn't mean that the DNA of leadership has changed. It's still about relationship building, capacity building, uh, trust. It's all, it's all those things, just like professionalism, the, the standards haven't changed. But what has changed uh, is, is the practice of leadership. In a pandemic, uh, you, you can't rely on the old models of leadership to dictate how you should behave because schools are, are no longer operating the way they were. So leaders are no longer operating the way they were. So I think what, what, what where that takes us is to a form of leadership that is really blended. We talk about blended learning, but I think we've got blended leadership now. We've also got uh, distributed leadership because essentially you are leading individuals online and you're not seeing them face to face so it requires a different sort of leadership skill a different set of practices a different set of norms really and I guess my own view is I'm not I'm not 100% sure that we we can go back or that we should go back I think the leadership that we have is 
as Pakti has rightfully said, is collaborative, it's creative, and in fact, it's community-based as well. We're seeing a lot of agency coming from community organizations. Um, so I think that leadership itself hasn't changed, but the, the, the context has changed dramatically, and we know what that does to leadership practices. But I think what I'm heartened by is that 10 weeks or 11 weeks on, we're seeing schools still functioning uh, remotely. We're seeing young people still learning. We're seeing leaders of schools engaging with their staff, albeit in a different way. And we're seeing new leadership practices, which quite frankly are probably better than the ones we saw before. I don't think we've got uh, the theory to follow the practice just yet, but I think the practice itself is, is both illuminating and insightful and, and in, in many ways, innovative. And that's what we need from our leaders right now at all levels in the system. We need innovation, we need inspiration, and ultimately we also need uh, care, which includes self-care. So leadership has dramatically altered, in my view, as a result of this pandemic. And I think we're going to see many more forms of leadership practice uh, emerging uh, for the better. So let's push the conversation one step further then. What lies ahead? Is this, should we anticipate a new normal or will return to school be business as usual in the coming year, assuming that a vaccine is created? Um, what lies ahead? You know, I've been kind of a surprise to see how how many questions there have been in media um, and by parents and some education authorities about how much children have lost something important, some learning in mathematics or, or literacy or, or something else. And, you know, this indicates to me that, that we, you know, if these questions continue, we're certainly going to go, go back to business as usual. Um, much more interesting and important question would be that what these children did learn when they were locked into their houses and were not able to come to school, um, what did they learn about life? What did they learn about this pandemic and a virus? Or what did they learn when they spent more time with their parents and siblings and hopefully played more and, and learned to play a musical instrument or uh, do something in the kitchen? I think these questions should be something that we ask far before we should be concerned about how much kids have lost something and you know as we if we continue asking these questions of loss uh, uh, then then of course the it's much more likely that we're going to return back to the business as usual uh, or uh, rather than uh, creating something new and finally i think the important point here is that has been much less discussed here is that and, and this is a fact this is the only thing we know for sure and it is that all the governments in the world when this uh, the, when this mess is over, uh, I don't know how how long it's going to take. It doesn't matter. But all the governments uh, will be uh, they find themselves between the between a rock and a hard, hard place. Meaning that their budgets uh, are blown away, uh, and they 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 debt they are debt up to their eyeballs. Which means that they have to find savings and cut budgets uh, wherever they can. They cannot do that in health because of the obvious reasons. So what is left there in the national budgets is education. So I, I think what we're gonna see around the world within the next five to 10 years is the reduced budgets. Uh, there's much less resources and money available. There will be much less teachers in these systems in many countries. And it's very hard to believe, uh, unless we are really bold and smart, that anything radically new could come uh, in, in this type of fiscal conditions that many countries will find themselves. I hope that I'm wrong with this one. Uh, and if I am, I'm very happy to admit and apologize. But it's, uh, I spent too many, too many years working in the education administration, and I know how difficult things are when the reality hits through the um, reduced budgets.